So, Black Clover, for the beginning of the final saga, has started off on a very, very damn good note. Hey, yo, shout outs to Bully Maguire, aka Lucius Zogratis. What is this? No Chrono, Juice of Chrono, was beast as all hell. We all know how nasty he was when he saved the entire country from at the time Patrick. That was amazing. But damn, as a villain, when he's gone from babyface to heel, yo. Hey, yo, shout outs to Lucius Zogratis. Shout outs to Bully Maguire. Now, I will say one thing in terms of actual power. In terms of power, he is a bit confusing because I would figure that he would be a lot more uh, overwhelming, overbearing when it comes to how much man he would release because he has consumed the both of Lucifero's hearts. And I would figure, okay, he'd have that same amount of magic, that same amount of mana, where like we saw during the last arc, how Lucifero could just exist, just being near him was almost suffocating for even like the top tier guys. But I'm not getting that sense at all from Lucius, no even close. However, he does have the gravity magic. And so maybe he has consumed a bit, just, just, just a bit of the actual mana amount, magic amount, from Lucifero, but he's now taken full bore Lucifero's abilities. So we see him do the whole Dante boxing, infighting stuff, like he was getting ready to fight against a Paul brother, Hajime no Ippo style, that Dempsey role, and then we see him use a time magic, which is very impressive to freeze like that whole area at the beginning, just completely stop time in that whole section. And we see how effective he is with that time magic still, like it's still very impressive nonetheless. Whether he's Lucius or Julius, still very phenomenal with said time magic. And then when he does transform Lily's soul into a, quote, happy human, and she becomes a part of the race from on high, she does use spatial magic, which, yo, what? That threw me off guard entirely, but apparently he actually had taken out Beelzebub, so he has three of the hearts of all of the supreme devils the old school devils astaroth lucifero and beelzebub so you would think as a result just being near this guy would be like aizen like you would cease to exist but that's that's again that's not happening so i'm not too sure if that's gonna be a thing later on well unless he's not fully processed all that magical power from those three devils on the safe side he is obviously taking their abilities at the bare minimum now he himself was pretty impressive but keep in mind that Asta is not in full Devil Union form in Chapter 334. We see him fight against him, I think, relatively evenly when he's at, like, half Devil Union. And Asta, relatively evenly, because Asta is still sweating and kind of on edge, obviously, for a host of reasons. Not just because of the power of Bully Maguire, but also because he looks just like Julius. He looks just like Wizard King, the lad of lads. And also he's in town, he must protect the people. So it is a pickle, obviously, but still, again, I'm gonna say relatively evenly. But once Sister Lily gets captured and that speed, that, that flying thunder god, that law, <laughs> get him, she changes. Asta is so shook. The Tyler one of anime manga is so taken aback that Sister Lily, the one he's supposed to time and time again, got captured and has changed and the first thing she says to him is, Asta, please, for the sake of world peace, die. Die. That shook him to his soul. And then he gets cut down by Bully Maguire. So apparently some folks were complaining about that. We're off the rip for Asta to suffer such a grievous wound. That doesn't make any sense. But it does make sense. Clearly. He, he got mentally annihilated just seeing Lily in that state. Now, we see in the next chapter, 335, he does rebound to where he's like, I'm going to save you. But ultimately speaking, he does, quote, die with Lily's spatial magic she just gained from Bully Maguire. And because it's Astaroth's spatial magic, it should be on a higher level than even Xenon. Xenon was nasty with that spatial ability. He really was. He even got a devil heart from Beelzebub. So he was disgustingly powerful with that ability. But it is very likely that Lily is better at spatial magic than Xenon. She even shuts down Noelle's aqua dragon that's coming her way at full speed. And then obviously when Asta gets blipped, when he gets Thanos snapped, it's like, okay, 
So you have Noel, Mimosa, Nero, so much sweat instantly. And Asta appears that he's kicked the bucket. But of course, we know that's not the case. Because there's no way Tobias is going to change my characters now. If we do, I am dropping Black Clover. I need, I need my four foot stud. All right, I need to be there, studly and short, always. He can't get a single inch past five foot one. If he does, I'm mad. However, there's a good chance. There's a very, 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 very good chance that Asta is not dead. There are three core reasons why Asta is probably still alive. Number one is that at the end of the latest chapter, it appears that the way Sister Lily and Lucius disappear, it's almost in the same fashion as Asta being blipped, where it's that star and that vanish. So it looks like Sister Lily had more or less transported Asta rather than say erase Asta. That's the first thing. The second thing is that because Asta's anti-magic, he probably got transported to a unknown location. So let's say it's kind of like Bartholomew Kuhn in One Piece where he smacks you and you go on your journey. But because of Asta's anti-magic, that journey is cut short and he's gonna wind up someplace else rather than actually dying. Or let's say it was a whole erasing thing, but it's kind of mitigated in some way where he's not completely erased, where like he exists in some sort of extra dimensional area because of the anti-magic abilities. And well, you would say, okay, hold on now. He was literally on the verge of death before he got blipped. We see that cut. He can't even move, he caught all his blood, and so on and so forth. It's a big wound. The Demon Dweller, the Demon Divider, they're not even activated. But they always, always have anti-magic properties. Recall earlier in the series with Julius, the King Progressive, the Lad of Lads. He was actually holding on to Asa's sword for the first time, and his mana was actually being sucked away by the sword, being erased by the sword, just innately. His swords and his body is anti-magic, innately. So I think for the most part, the anti-magic should play a role in the situation where he's near death. If not, then let's say it could, be, it, it could be the case here where the real powers of his grimoire activate in some weird way to actually save Asta from death. Because we do know, based on the Lee Bay Lacita flashback, is that she was pouring magic into the Grimoire itself, but Lacita herself is actually very vague on how she found the Grimoire. In fact, that's all she just says, I found this Grimoire. So its origins, why it chose Asta, yada yada, blah, 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 are still up in the air, therefore it could be the case here where the true power of the Grimoire has still something more to be kind of unleashed. So I think it's possible that Grimoire's true power can kind of come into effect very briefly and save Asta from the brink of death. And then the third option ultimately would be Lacita actually didn't kill Asta, where Asta's last words to her did kick in and then she like instinctively kind of teleported him somewhere to safety, some of that sort. Not to, let's say, death. Death. In a volcano or in space, somewhere where he can recover, hopefully, and then come back to the story later on, obviously. That's what I think is also possible as well. So there's a very, very, very good bet here that Asta is not dead. And all in all, now everyone knows what's up with Julius, now, of course, Lucius, where they came in hella late, but all the captains finally pulled up, come in the last chapter. And then now it's going to be red alert, red alert. We have Lizard King being taken over. We just lost Asta. And I think for like the first time in a while, we're going to actually see how they operate without the main character. Obviously, you're going to have Yuno coming to Frey 2 at some point as well, which I'm okay with as long as there's like tremendous gains from Asta in the future. Potentially, this whole thing might even lead to Asta's father. Let's say Asta is actually dead now. He's actually genuinely dead. Something may go down to where he is restored back to life. I don't think it's going to be a Dragon Ball Wish or an Otensei or it's like some weird Subaru action and we go back in time, ReZero style. No. If anything, given the introduction of the angels, at least the pseudo angels, because all Julius did was take the demon power, the devil power, and then he purified it and now it's angel power. Quote angel power. At the same time, they're not really angels. They're more like... I think the term is Nephilim, where like they're half demon, half angel, something like that. But if that's the case, then there could be pure angels. And I'd like to theorize that there actually are pure angels 
and Lasita and Asta could be related to angels, or particularly Asta's father could be an angel of some type. So this could be a somewhat Yu Yu Hakusho type situation where you have a Kowinma, a uh, sort of lead figurehead of the afterlife, kind of come in there and assist Asta when he's, quote, dead. Just how Kowinma assisted Genkai and brought Genkai back to life. And because we know that Tabata is very influenced by Berserk, knowing how Griffith came back in Berserk and he was somewhat holy, something similar could potentially happen to Asta. However, Asta does have a link up with a devil. Huh. So maybe Libe's existence kind of interferes in some way with Asta's linking up with the angel power, if he had angel power that he was born with. But let's say that Libe dies as a result of Lily's actions. His grimoire is now dormant again. And then maybe that's when they come in. Who knows? There's options here. Because again, Lucius is more like a Nephilim rather than an actual angel. Same thing goes for Lily. They're not fully angels. It's just demon power purified. That looks like an angel. But then again, you could argue well, that essentially is what heaven is, where someone like Lucifer was ultimately an archangel. So maybe? So I had some deep, 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 deep lore stuff. There are options here. We'll see where we go in the future. But obviously, obviously, the tension is very, very high. Like in the previous arc, where you had the entire Golden Dawn just wiped out, where the Harkin was getting reamed by Vanika, and then of course Zenon caught, he captured Yami. So just like back then, good start, great start. Tension is really high off the rip, and I like where this is going, obviously. Lily being a part of this whole thing is also very surprising. Going into this arc, I never thought that Lily would actually be part of this arc in any major way. No. But at the same time, it is pretty fitting since she is now this angel-like being and she is a nun. Someone very close to God like her being turned into an angel-like being is very fitting. Almost, you can argue, even faded, like her being a nun is significant in some way for her to be a pseudo-angel. And she's also the first paladin, which means that in theory, if there's more paladins to come, Lily would still be the second strongest adversary in this current arc after Lucius. Never thought I would see Lily in this type of position. <laughs> Overall, a great start, a very great start to the final saga of Black Clover.